So what we're gonna talk about is music marketing philosophy. My name is Leezy the Gifted. What I wanna basically help you do is grow your fan base and grow your audience online. I've been able to do pretty okay for myself and I wanna to try to help you do the same. So we're gonna jump right into it. If you like the video, obviously like and subscribe, do all that good stuff, but I wanna deliver some value to you right away. So we're gonna talk about music marketing philosophy, the right philosophy so that you can approach music marketing the right way um, so that you don't you know, spin your wheels, not getting any results, let's get it. So I wanna talk about music marketing as a philosophy. Um, if you're like me, you're really into marketing. Like I love marketing, I think marketing is cool. So I'm like into it. So marketing also, like I have a lot of different things I'm gonna to touch on in this video. I wanna talk about why you should like marketing. You know, marketing for a lot of artists feels like a task. It feels like a daunting task, a task that you don't want to do. And it feels like it's something that's like not fun. Like, hey, I just wanna get here in the studio and just like make music. I don't wanna worry about like growing my fan base or marketing or blah, blah, blah. And a lot of the time we feel that way, truthfully, because we're not good at marketing or not growing our fan base and we don't know what we're doing and so we're like ah screw this like the truth is though you're just like not you're not good at it so you like don't like it but i'm gonna make it so that at least we have a good philosophy about marketing that way we can actually approach marketing with an enjoyable mindset i actually like marketing therefore marketing is a little bit easier for me because i do enjoy it so let's start off first of all with breaking the belief that marketing as a creative thing is different than marketing as a than creative creatively doing music. Marketing requires creativity. Not the exact same as music, but a lot like music. So if you're into writing lyrics, rapping, recording vocals, making beats, performing, all that creative stuff, you will find your place in loving marketing and here's how. You can take that same creative approach that you have with your songs and do something creative with the marketing. You can come up with creative ways to make videos. You can come up with creative advertising campaign ideas. You can come up with creative emails to write, creative offers that you can offer out for your fans so that they actually are into what it is that you're trying to put out. So um, I'll give you an example of something I did that was somewhat creative. So I've been doing music for over 10 years now. And actually, I'm in my 11th year. And so when I got to the 10 year mark, I was like, damn. 10 years, that's crazy. I wanna do something special for like an offer for my fans so that, you know, they'll like enjoy it. So what I did was I put together something called Decade Collection. And Decade Collection, what that is, is basically, and I'm gonna share with you everything in this, but this is basically all of the music that I've ever made in the past 10 years. Now mind you, I'm talking about the music from when I was 17 years old that is legit not good. <laughs> like the music that like, I, where I was like not good at rapping and I kind of sucked. I was rapping over other people's beats, like famous songs, YouTube beats, like stuff like that. And all of that. So basically why did I put this, music that's not on Spotify and Apple and will never go on Spotify and Apple. Why did I put this thing together? I wanted you to basically be a part of the journey. I wanted you to see the growth of 10 years and the idea of decade collection is like, hey, whatever it is that you're doing in life will require you to be doing it for a long time before you see any real results. And so I wanted to put this together to send the message of like, be persistent, be consistent, believe in yourself and do something and be in it for the long haul. So it's this beautiful tin, tin can thing, right? And inside, inside of it, is a little USB flash drive that also says Decade Collection. Now you're probably looking at this and be like, okay, Leezy, come on bro, nobody uses flash drives, this is a stupid offer. Well, here's the deal, I also did send a digital download of everything, so you're getting hmm, 182 songs, I believe, 50 videos, over 100 images, and then I also recorded a special, um, we call it Decade Collection talk show, so like I had my friend Gabe basically interview me about my career and I put it together and put it on SoundCloud and it's like a secret like little back and forth, almost like an audio book, like a secret audio book. So I email all of that to you when you buy it. What's cool is, let me show you something else. So the other thing I did too was as an upsell product, I made hats and it says Decade Collection and this is my logo with the, um, with the line with the olive branch, it says Decade Collection and then I signed it for everybody. And yes, I did sign myself a copy. <laughs> so, 
that and, and so I sold this for uh, on sale first week sale for fifty dollars, and then the hat was thirty seven. I sold fourteen of these, and then I sold two hats. So I made about seven hundred dollars in revenue in a week, which was great. I didn't spend any money on ads. I only did email marketing and phone calls to my fans, and it was just a creative offer. It was something creative that I put together that I emailed out to my fans and gave people a call and told them about what I was doing. So the idea is be creative, do something creative with your marketing. Okay. So that's the first thing in terms of marketing philosophy and marketing mindset that I wanted to share with you is be as creative as you are with your music, with your marketing. Here's the next piece of it. The next piece of the marketing philosophy that I want to touch on is the back end. So when it comes to marketing in general, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get customers to build a business. Okay. Business is driven by revenue, which is driven by profit. Okay. The only way that you're going to be able to really drive true revenue, real true revenue is controlling the communication between you and your fan base and your customers. The problem with just using social media and just using Spotify is you are at the mercy of those platforms. When you're on social media and you post things, your posts only get seen by a few people. You can go down the rabbit hole of YouTube and figure out how to better utilize um, organic reach. I know Instagram Reels right now is something that's really popular and I think you should use that. And the same thing with Spotify. We all know that the game, the game of Spotify is very dirty. There's whatever, people are like, oh, 40,000 songs a day get uploaded to Spotify, whatever it is, it's probably something like that. You get 3,000th of a penny every time someone streams 30 seconds. You're, you're, you are chasing after a very, very, very difficult goal when it comes to like making a living as a musician using social media and Spotify. So what's the right way to do it? So like my philosophy is so much different and it's, and it's, it's come from other places that I've believed in. I, I've, I've looked at guys like Russell Brunson, Gary Vaynerchuk, but a lot of Russell Brunson's material, if you're into him. Uh, also, I've learned from a company called Indiepreneur, which is a music marketing company, really dope. And the idea for me isn't just to get followers on social media. The idea for me is to actually grow an email list, build a following that way. Grow an email list to where I can email people and get 20% of them to open and 1% of them to click my emails. That way, when I get an email list, I know, hey, listen, if I have an email list of 1,000 people, 10,000 people, 50,000 people, and I'm like, okay, if if I have an email list, and let's say I've got 5,000 people on it, right? I'm going to get my calculator. So if I have an email list of, let's just say um, 5,000, right? 5,000 people, and realistically, 20% of them are going to open it, that means 1,000 people will open it. Now, out of these 5,000, if only 1% of them click on the link in the email, that means 50 people are going to click the link. Now, all of those people that go to that link, those 50, we can assume about a one, we can assume a two to 5% conversion, meaning of these 50 people, probably 2% of those people are gonna like take a meaningful action. So if it's sending people to like Spotify, we can assume that like, probably 10% of those people are actually gonna go listen to the song. We can also assume that like, if we're trying to sell something, probably 2% of those people are gonna buy it. So 50 times 0.02, wait a minute, 50 times That is only one. one. One person out of 50 might buy it. Now maybe you get 10%. Maybe five people buy it. But that's the truth, that's the way the numbers break down. Usually of your email list, your whole email list, times 0.02, oh, I'm sorry, I did 5,000 times, I did 500 times point, times 2%. 5,000 times 2% is 100. So 5,000 times 0.02, that equals 100. So of those 5,000, 100 people are probably gonna take a meaningful action. Now, if you're just driving them to a Spotify link, that's cool, you might get 100 people to stream, but if you're driving them to a purchase link, hmm, that means 100 people are gonna buy something. If I'm selling something for 50 bucks, that's a really great offer, 100 times 50 is 5K, $5,000. Hmm, okay, that's kinda nice, huh? If this is $100, 
which is 100 times 100. Oh, 10,000. Ooh, nice, right? So if you can sell something that makes sense. So the point of what I'm saying is like, if you put together something like this, decade collection 50, this is 37. Let's just say the average cart value is 50 plus 37 divided by two. So the average cart value, let's say it's 43 and a half. Wait, 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 50 plus 37. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Basically, I'm just trying to say, if you have a good average cart value, if you bump products up like with a hat or with t-shirts or stuff like that, you'll be able to increase the amount of revenue that you can get per customer. Increase your customer lifetime value, LTV, right? So, my point is, the music marketing philosophy that a lot of us have is, all right, I wanna get as many followers as possible, get my reach as high as possible, and get as many Spotify streams. I'm all about Spotify, Spotify, Spotify. I'm not anti-Spotify anymore. If you look at some of my old videos, I definitely used to be like, F Spotify. I don't feel that way anymore. There's a value in it. Obviously, fans who buy this are gonna wanna listen to your music on a regular basis. So, if they have Spotify, why not give them some something to listen to so that they can enjoy their life and not just have to buy this to enjoy your music. I still think you should be able to provide fans with something for free so that they can actually experience you. That free thing is going to be the music. So philosophy wise, we wanna to try to get people off those social media platforms and onto our email list. So um, that's kind of the philosophy that, I, that I'm trying to take. And with all, my, with all of, you know, anybody who hires me to coach them on music marketing, like that's kind of the direction I wanna take everybody, is like, hey, how do we put something together that will help your audience be closer to you? Because you're gonna work on an album, you're gonna go in the studio, you're gonna spend the money you're gonna spend on like getting like the song sounding right, and blah, 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 all those things, right? And then you're gonna post your music where? You're gonna post it on Instagram, you're gonna post it on Facebook, you're gonna post it on Twitter, you're gonna text people, yo, check out the new album. Chances are you're kind of in a place where your email list is either zero or not that big. And the amount of people who are even available to listen to your music is probably not that big. The other truth is you are not going to be able off just the strength of the music for your fan base to grow. Trust me, because I've tried it. That's not how things work. For me, the best way to do things is if you're running some kind of paid advertising to put some gas on the fire. If you have a really great video, put some gas on the fire, get people to actually watch the video, then retarget those people to go to Spotify or to go and get on your email list. Now we're talking some good stuff. If we are controlling the way we communicate with our fans, now we're actually talking about building a fan base and building something that's going to be scalable and sustainable in the long run. So, that's the purpose of this video was really a more of like a marketing philosophy from like a bird's eye view. Hey, what are we trying to accomplish here? We don't just want hella views. We don't just want hella followers or like monthly listeners on Spotify. We want people who can come to us and like get on our email list and buy merchandise, flash drives, shirts, hats, concert tickets down the road, like things like that. Nowadays, with the capabilities of live streams, you could sell live streams too. Hey, I'm doing a live stream concert, tickets are $5. Come watch this live stream. There will be no replay. And then like you could be like, hey, if you wanna watch the replay, you can buy the replay for 15 bucks. Like if you pay 15 bucks, I'll send you the replay. People might pay you 15 bucks for that. You know what I mean? But the point is like, if you're wanting to do like a Patreon thing or if you're wanting to sell things like what I'm talking about, which you should want to sell these things, you should be trying to get people on an email or SMS list, like SMS meaning like text message marketing. And like the idea is to try to get them off these platforms. The amount of work that it's going to take for you to build your Spotify to a really good level, like good level meaning you're making a living off just Spotify. The amount of work and effort and money that it's going to take to get there it's the same amount of, it's actually probably more work than it would take for you to just switch your mindset and direction and be like, why don't I just go with this whole email list thing that Leezy's talking about? If I grow my email list, if I grow a business, if I actually think revenue, profit, things of that nature, and I try to go in that direction, it's probably gonna cost you less money, it's probably gonna be a lot less work, and you're gonna get a much higher return. From there, 
when you have that email list of a thousand or five, by the way, my open rates, this whole 20%, 1%, you could have higher open rates than that. If you've got a really nice, loyal following on email and you're like emailing them good stuff and they're super into what you do and you're engaging with them, you probably have higher open rates. Like I've had many emails that have gotten 40% open rates and over 1% click through rate. So there's a lot of emails that I've had like that. And so like, okay, that's just more exposure that I get to control. When I send an email, I don't pay to send that email. It's sent directly to people. I can see exact stats and metrics. With Spotify, I can't. And with email, I can see who opened it. So if I see someone clicked it and opened it, I can look at who their, their name, their email. I can look at all the other emails they've opened and clicked. I can see their whole customer history, everything. With Spotify, you can't do that. If someone plays your song, you don't know who it is. You don't know where they're from. You don't know what other songs of yours they've played or anything like that. Nothing. So that's why I'm all about this whole email list building and SMS building. I'm not the only one. A lot of people feel that way. And so currently what I'm working on, I have a lot of paid ads running right now. I've got about four campaigns running. Um, I'm having a video views campaign. I'm trying to just grow the audience in that way. I'm retargeting some of those people. I'm also, I also am putting some money toward growing my Spotify because I have the money to do it. It makes sense for me to do it. I want to try to grow Spotify just to have that kind of like that social proof and those numbers and to have some people join me that way. But the main thing I'm doing, what I'll do in a later video is that whiteboard, which I'm gonna do a whole whiteboard breakdown. I'll probably even do it. I have something on my uh, on my computer that I'll show you. Basically breaking down for you how I'm going to launch my album called Views from the Sunset. And I'm gonna basically show you the whole marketing approach and how to do it. And I have like a couple of people helping me. So if you are looking to do something like that, like if you're looking to maybe launch an album or you're maybe just looking to, hey Lee, I don't have an album. I've got a lot of singles I'm trying to put out, but I wanna figure out how do I grow my email list if I don't have an album? How do I get with what you're doing? You're talking about selling things. You're talking about making real money. I'm talking about beating the system. I'm talking about not being a slave to Instagram, TikTok, and Spotify. I'm talking about owning your own destiny. If you're with that, click below and book a call with me. Like all we're going to do on the call, book the call. I just literally want to get to know you. I'm going to basically be like a marketing doctor. I'm going to ask you tons of questions. I'm going to see where you're at. I'm going to see if I'm going to even, if I'm going to be able to help you at all. If I'm going to be able to help you, I'll walk you through what I've got going on to help. If I'm not going to be able to help you, that's cool too. There's no problems with it. But the best thing I would say you could do, book a call with me. Let's see if we can kind of figure out something that we can do to actually get you to the next level. So I appreciate you watching this video. Again, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be putting out a lot of these videos. I'm trying to put out just one video a week right now. I might work up to doing maybe two videos a week. But for now, one video a week is all I'm going to be doing. So make sure to stay tuned so that you can check up on all these new videos, all right? Thanks so much for checking out my channel, and I'm going to talk to you on the next one. Peace.